So I cut out this MDF template for the shape and that's gonna kind of help me visualize what the end result will look like. And I'm thinking kind of a circular pattern emanating out from the center, but let's play around and see what we can come up with. Really not sure about the pink. I'm gonna try to take it out. I carefully flipped the Lego structure over and then used gaffer tape to secure the four base plates together. This will make it a lot easier to maneuver the structure as a whole when we put it into the epoxy form later on. Then use the cutoff wheel on our angle grinder to trim, or really more like melt, the excess LEGO base plate away. And the reason I'm trimming it here is because I'm going to be putting the whole structure inside the epoxy form. So the smaller the structure, the less epoxy I'll have to use. I'm making the form for the epoxy with steel flashing and a melamine base. The steel flashing is easy to bend into odd shapes like that of a guitar, for example. I cut up some scrap plywood and 2x4s to make support blocks for the outside of the flashing, and then placed those support blocks around the flashing and used a hot glue gun to secure everything. No screws were needed here. I then ran a bead of caulk around the inside seams to prevent epoxy leakage. The caulk doesn't need to be pretty since I'll be cutting the sides of the epoxy away when I shape the guitar body later on. I decided to try something new and use a silicone spray as a form release for the epoxy. I'm hoping it'll work out okay since it's definitely easier to apply and is much less expensive than using tuck tape inside epoxy forms. I decided to use Total Boat's thick set epoxy resin for this project because it has a longer working time than other epoxies, can be poured deep, and it cures crystal clear. After mixing everything thoroughly, I placed the epoxy into a vacuum chamber to remove as many air bubbles as possible. First batch of epoxy is out of the vacuum chamber and we're going to just pour a thin layer of epoxy across the whole form that will let harden before we come back and pour a second layer that we're gonna place the Lego sheet into. And we're casting this guitar upside down, so this is what you're gonna see from the top of the guitar. I let the first layer partially cure so it was firm but still tacky before I poured the second layer of epoxy where I'll start embedding the Legos. The original plan was just to cover half the Legos with epoxy so I could easily remove the back plate to backfill the Legos with more epoxy. But I underestimated the volume displacement of the Legos, poured too much epoxy, and ended up epoxying the back plate to the Legos. Fortunately, I was able to come back with a chisel and pry off the back plates. All right, I am happy, relieved, all of the above we got the backer board off, so we're not having to go to plan B. We're gonna stick with the idea of backfilling these bricks with epoxy, and then I'm actually gonna come back with a second layer of bricks, put them into those, fill those with epoxy. The whole thing is solid. We got two layers of Legos, and I think the rest of the process will go much more smoothly after that.
So I chose the thick set epoxy, not as much because of its depth, although that's nice for this, but because it sets really slow. So that's gonna give me a lot of time to get these Legos into place in the second layer. So these Legos are air traps. I've been here for about 45 minutes and there's still little bubbles coming up and having to blast them. Forty-eight hours later. I was ready to remove the epoxy from the form. I was a bit nervous as I've had epoxy stick to melamine in the past, but the silicone spray did the trick this time. The flashing peeled away really easily and once I broke the vacuum seal that formed between the epoxy and the melamine, it popped right off. No sticky. Before I cut the guitar out of that crazy heavy Lego epoxy blank, let me take a second and show you how I designed the guitar in Fusion 360. Now if the shape looks familiar, it's because it was inspired by the well-known Gibson Les Paul. I found a free vector model of the Les Paul online and I brought that into Fusion 360. In order to make the shape of the guitar more of my own, I started by tracing the Les Paul shape with the control spline tool. This tool allows me to grab individual points to push and pull the overall shape around. Now it took me a little bit of time to get a shape I was happy with, but eventually I got to the shape that you see right here. I could then export my design from Fusion and bring the model into Inventable's free easel software, which allows me to cut out an MDF template on my Xcarve CNC. So if you are CNC curious, but not ready to just take the dive, I'll have a link below to sign up for a free easel account. You can play with that software and get a feel for what a CNC could do, even if you don't have one. Now we need to cut the shape of the guitar out of the epoxy. I started by using a template to trace the guitar shape right onto the epoxy, and then using my jigsaw to cut just outside those lines. I took the epoxy body over to my router table and set up a pattern routing bit to trim the sides to the exact shape of the template. Now, if you're wondering what that cool setup is for raising lower than the bit, that's my new Rockler router table with its ProLift insert. Now, this is one of those things that's not necessary, but it's just so nice to be able to quickly change router bits on your table and not have to fumble around under the table to raise and lower the bits. Speaking of changing bits, I swapped in a round over bit to round off all the edges of the guitar before bringing it back to my workbench to route out the neck pocket and pickup cavity. To speed up this process, I set up my two Hikoki Metabo HPT routers with template bits of different lengths and got to work. And I suppose this would be a good time to thank Hikoki for sponsoring this video. So first things first, I get a lot of questions about the differences between Hikoki and Metabo HPT, and I just wanted to clear that up. There are none. They sell the same tools that were previously branded Hitachi, as well as a new innovative multi-volt line of 36-volt cordless tools, which can also be used plugged in with an AC adapter. And if you're in North America, the brand is Metabo HPT, and everywhere else in the world, it's Hikoki. So I'll level with you for a second. At the beginning of this year, I switched over to using Hikoki Metabo HPT cordless tools exclusively without actually having used that many of the tools. It was kind of a leap of faith. 
But I took the word of my friend and fellow YouTuber, Chris Salamone, that I'd be happy with the tools. So fast forward to today, 10 months later, and I'm very happy I took the plunge because honestly, I love the Hikoki Metabo HPT line. All the tools I've used work great. I'm always happy to recommend them. Compare them to other tools if you want to DM me. And on that note, let's get back to the build before I sound like a complete Hikoki fanboy, even though I probably am. After routing the pickup cavity and the neck pocket on the front of the guitar, I flipped it over to route out the electronics pocket on the back of the guitar. This stuff is messy. Sure. The electronics cutout has two depths, a deeper pocket for the electronics themselves and a ledge that's shallower for the cover plate to rest on. Speaking of that cover plate, I decided to add a custom touch and moved over my X-Carve to cut out a translucent neon green acrylic cover plate. This was really simple to do in easel since I already had the model and I could just move the shape I'd use to route the cover plate cutout in by about a hundredth of an inch and get a perfect fit for the cover plate. Next, we'll move on to the bridge, and I'm going to be using my drill press for this part. So for those that are new to guitar, the bridge is just the hardware that holds the strings in place on the body of the guitar. The bridge for this guitar is fairly simple. It just requires six small holes to be drilled from the front to the back, so the strings can be threaded through to a string plate in the back of the guitar. It accepts the strings and is directly behind the bridge, and that's why I had to use the drill press to make sure that the holes went directly straight down from the bridge location to the string plate. Back at the workbench, I drilled out a hole for the quarter inch input jack where you plug in the guitar cable. This was a little tricky since the Legos were set back further from the front of the guitar than I hoped and I didn't want the hole to come through the front of the Lego, so I had to drill it kind of off center. I wanted to add a few more custom Lego themed touches, starting with the truss rod cover plate. Now I'm using a neck from an inexpensive used guitar. So I took the cover plate from it and used it as a template to cut a new cover plate from a Lego base plate. So for the tuners, I'm gonna try to replace the spinning grip on each of them with a Lego. And since these Legos are hollow, I'm gonna use epoxy in the back, kind of fill them in, and that way I can drill through them and screw them into the tuner so they'll, they'll be functional. I was a bit worried that the tuners would have trouble staying in tune after I'd modified them, but as you'll see during the sound test at the end, it worked out okay. Aesthetically, however, I'm not 100% sold on these. Yeah, they're with the LEGO theme, but uh, I just don't know. I might go back to the regular black tuners or maybe do a different color LEGO like blue. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. So for the volume knob, I've made this kind of epoxy LEGO brick here and I'm just gonna take it over to the CNC and carve the circular knob out of it. I wanted to partially recess it, so I cut a hole in the guitar body for it and put it in there to see what it looked like, and I just didn't like it. It kind of made it feel like a toy and detracted from the overall look, so I decided to just use a standard black knob in its place. I think it looks pretty cool, actually, having the recessed volume knob in the guitar body. Got everything carved out, routed, ready to go, and now it's time to polish the epoxy. Polishing is always tricky, uh, with epoxy especially. I've got this new sander here that's got some really great dust extraction and these soft foam sanding pads to start with that hopefully is gonna avoid the curly cues. Then we'll work up to wet sanding at some really high grits and finally hit it with some Total Boat plastic polish. And hopefully that'll make it shine.
This was the first time I was really, really happy with the results I got polishing epoxy. I think this is going to be my go-to method. With it polished, it was a simple matter of assembling all the parts, or so I thought. I was pretty much done it was all polished beautiful and every single cheap screw in the bridge broke off in the epoxy and it I, there's no head I can't drill them out I've I have no clue how the hell I'm gonna get these out of here how can we get back on the right track so I was panicking when all these screws ripped. Couldn't really get them out by drilling into them. And a buddy of mine who's a machinist said just use a Dremel and trying it. Seems like it's working. So let's get to it. See if we can get these out. Pour more epoxy and get some new screws. All right, guys, I am so relieved right now. It took about two hours with a Dremel and then refilled the holes I'd created with epoxy. And fortunately, the bridge hides all of that. So you'll never even know what happened. Back on track, let's uh, get this neck and everything done and get this baby assembled. Right, guys here it is and all in all this came out a lot better than i expected i'm pretty darn happy with it if you liked it too make sure to hit the thumbs up button subscribe and bell and you know without further ado let's get to the sound test <laughs> Not too bad, not too bad at all. So if you enjoyed this video, I've got another guitar video right up there that I think you'll enjoy. And I've got a bunch of other really cool projects on my channel that you should definitely check out. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.